So here are some graphics to follow up on some of the stuff that we covered last time. This is inflammation, where you've got, um, let me get my little pointer, tissue trauma and possible bacteria invasion, or both. And these would be the histamines that are sent out. And here in your nearby capillary is uh, blood flowing and white blood cells. Well, in response to the chemicals, the capillaries expand. See, it's bigger here. One thing I'm not happy with is there'd be a lot more red blood cells going through because there's more room. But also, white blood cells would be called to squeeze out through the little gaps that are now bigger gaps and invade the area and start attacking and, and eating up uh, the invaders. Phagocytes are a type of white blood cell that eats invaders. But Fluid would be leaking out of this and it would be swelling up the tissues. Uh, more red blood cells would be in all of the capillaries, which would make it redder. And because you've got deep tissue blood going into the, the surface, it would get warmer. So the warm and the red and the swelling are just side effects. It's the invasion of the white blood cells for defense that's really going on. We're gonna move into the circulation system. I know these are weird graphics. So we're gonna talk about this, but we just also talked about this, your lymph system, where you have all of these drainage tubes from all over your body, little collection points, these little dots are lymph nodes. Uh, your spleen is considered part of your lymph system because it's got blood storage functions. Your thymus, is considered part of your lymph system because that's where your T-cells mature. And even up in your head, uh, and they're discovering more drainage um, in and around the brain than they used to think there was. Uh, this has come up in the last year or so. But in um, some um, venereal worms, they will actually get into the lymph system and clog it up and cause you know, parts of the body just, just incredibly swell up because the fluid gets in there and can't get out. And uh, in some parts of Africa, it causes one form of what's called elephantiasis because the swelling made people think of elephants. So we're gonna get into the circulation system. Your heart is the main pump. Uh, the red blood is oxygenated coming back uh, from, the, uh, from the lungs where it picks up oxygen. The blue, your blood doesn't ever actually get blue. It just looks blue because of the way that your skin distorts uh, color. Um, but they always represent blue as deoxygenated blood. And uh, we will cover this. I just want to get the graphic up. Your heart has a right side with an upper pump that fills the lower chamber, an upper pump that fills the lower chamber on the left side. Remember, left on your right, right on your left. And then the major pumping organs that go out through the, uh, this artery and out through this artery, from the right side it goes to the lungs, comes back to the left side, from the left side it goes out to the body, to the per what's called the peripheral circulation. And it eventually comes back in to the right side. Uh, all of this will be covered in the, um, in the second pig lab where we, we look at the heart and talk more about the circulation. The upper chambers are called atria. That's the plural of atrium. It's a Latin word. So the purpose of the atria
there's the right atrium. When this pumps, it squeezes shut and you take blood that's come in from the body and this squeezes, notice it's much thinner lined. It doesn't have to be really powerful to do this. It just needs to push enough blood through to inflate this chamber. Same thing over here. Here's the left atrium, blood's coming back in from the lungs. And once this is pumped out, the, the body blood, it needs to be refilled in the left atrium. Again, thin lining does that. These are major pumps. They have a major, they got to push the blood out a long way, uh, sort of far enough to get it back. And so they need thick muscles on um, the ventricles. So atriums, they're valves that if blood tries to go back through, the valves slam shut. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and there are valves on the outflow also. Valves on the outflow also. Okay, that seems to be all I have for that. So the heart has four chambers. Two sides, the right, rats. Okay. Bulb blew out. The lining of the heart is a pretty dense epithelium. To be protect, all that fluid flowing could wear away at the, the muscle lining if it didn't have a very um, dense, kind of slippery lining that the blood just slips by. But because it has a very dense lining, you're not gonna get oxygen and nutrients from the blood going through the heart into the muscle that's doing the pumping. The heart has its own circulation system, its own coronary arteries and veins and capillaries. And the outflow of the left side, oxygenated blood, nutrition rich blood, uh, the blood coming back into the right atrium has just come out of the liver, as so uh, it's picked up nutrition. The liver has processed stuff, and then it goes right into the right side, out to the lungs and back. So when it comes back into the left side, the lungs don't use much. Is that the actual uh, breathing apparatus? isn't actually in your lungs, it's around your lungs. So there isn't much out here to use the nutrition from your digestive system. So the blood coming in here just picked up oxygen, has been almost not depleted of any nutrients at all. And then part of that immediately goes to feed your heart. Muscle, right? Oxygen, nutrients, needs a lot of that. And that's gonna be a question that shows up on the lab as well. So I just answered one of your lab questions. Uh, There are valves that the pressure slams them shut. There's actually little tendrils that hold the valves from going inside out. At one point they, call, they used to call them heart strings. They kind of look like heart strings. Really old uh, songs you'll hear ter the term heart strings. The valves overlap one another to slam shut. And sometimes the overlap doesn't completely overlap. So when the, the uh, pump closes, when the chamber closes, and the blood goes mostly out the way it's supposed to, some of the blood goes back up through the valve. It squirts up through the valve, and uh, with a stethoscope, if you know what you're listening for, you can hear it. And some of you already know what I'm talking about. That's a heart murmur. And heart murmurs can range from being just something you can hear that isn't a big deal, because very little blood is coming back through, to being uh, a major issue that compromises the pumping ability of the heart because too much blood is going back the way it's not supposed to. You know, 
There's certain types of viral infections that can really damage the valves. Uh, there's a possibility that coronavirus and some of its complications can damage the valves. And so a heart murmur can be anything, especially in kids while the heart valves are growing, can be anything from, eh, you got a heart murmur, come back, we'll listen to it again, probably it'll go away, to, wow, this is really bad, we need to replace these valves. Bum bum, bum bum, bum bum, bum bum. First bump, arteries filling the ventricles. Second bump, ventricles pushing the blood out on its long path to the lungs and back or to the body and back. So uh, you get a, a, a bigger sound from the second one. And the pacing is controlled through the medulla of your brain. Uh, it's feedback from oxygen levels to a large extent. Uh, oxygen levels are feedback to activity levels. And so as your activity levels go up, your, your heart pace goes up. And uh, we talked about uh, that being an issue. Um, well, we talked about breathing issues with uh, SIDS. But if something happens and your heart has problems, it, uh, you, you get fluid buildup in your lungs, and when the heart pushes blood to the lungs, the, the capillaries there are squeezed shut by the pressure, and it, the fluid bounces back. So the heart's going, pump, boom, pump, boom. You're getting what's called congestive heart failure, is that the heart pacing starts to have problems because it's trying to push stuff out and stuff's bouncing back. It can also happen when uh, if you have a massive amount of blood loss uh, or a lot of fluid loss in anaphylactic shock and there just isn't that much blood in the chamber so the heart isn't effectively pumping and it'll try and it'll try and it'll speed up and then it will just kind of go and do not so much pumping as shivering. This is what shows up on the medical shows where you go, oh, 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 oh. that's fibrillation. It's really the heart muscle doing more shivering than it is pumping. And very often it is followed by your heart going, screw this, and just stops pumping entirely. And a lot of you know the corollary of fibrillation, which is deep fibrillation, you know, doing the shocks. You know, you put the, the uh, one input here and the, the output here. If you throw electricity through the heart, you can make a muscle tense by electrifying it. And uh, they found out pretty early when they were you know, figuring out how this worked, that if people were hanging on to the person that you were defibrillating, uh, we're pretty good conductors. We're full of ions, so we're pretty good electrical conductors. And uh, some people would get shocked and it would actually make their heart stop. Is that you shock the heart kind of in the middle of the pumping cycle, it can sometimes stop. That's one of the dangers of electrocution. And, uh, but you shock it to hopefully start it back up. In the medical shows, they do it for like everything. But if the heart has, if it's congestive heart failure that's causing the problem, then getting the heart started probably isn't gonna do anything. If the pressure has dropped to the point where there's no blood to pump, then shocking the heart to start it isn't really gonna do much good. So it, whether that works or not has a lot to do with why the heart stopped in the first place. Okay, trying to make these videos shorter. So before we get into the blood vessels, I'm gonna stop this and we'll start it on another video later.